Hey, what's up YouTube? Uh, this is going to be a video on how to prep your trim, uh, painted trim, for uh, paint. Um, so after I install it, I'll first hit it with Crawford's uh, vinyl spackle. It's real lightweight, interior, exterior. Um, this stuff's really great. You can pick it up at, uh, usually I get it at uh, Sherwin-Williams, and I'll apply that with a one-inch knife, and then also a four-inch knife is nice to have on hand. So then I'll come back, hit that real quick, um, the sanding sponge, dust it off, and then I'll um, use my Bondo glazing spot putty. Um, you can get that at Sherwin-Williams. I'm pretty sure they carry it at Home Depot, but it's Bondo brand and it's called glazing spot putty. You apply that with the one inch knife and then you don't need a lot of it. A lot of guys will hit all their nail holes if you don't want your nail holes to flash. Here I butted all the trim because that's what the homeowner wanted. So I'm using it in those uh, corners, build them up. And then so that way you, that seam will disappear. Um, so I usually do two coats of that, get it all sanded up, dust it. And this stuff cures uh, relatively flat fast because it's a lacquer base. So that's kind of nice. Um, it dries fast so it doesn't slow you down. Um, so yeah, I'll show you here. I'm applying some and then I'm ready for paint in some areas. So I'll, I'll kind of show you my technique there. Thanks for watching. Um, please go to Meyer Construction and hit like, hit subscribe. So on my corners here, I'm using uh, Bondo. It's glazing uh, spot putty. First I hit him with Crawford's, gave it a quick sand, dust it off. And I'm using a one inch knife to apply it. And then I use my four inch knife to kind of feather it out. I'm kind of working off the side of my knife to apply it where I want it, right on the seam. And if you overwork it, it kind of starts to dry on you because it's lacquer based. So you, you kind of work quick, only have a little bit at a time to work with. So here pretty quick, it's gonna start to, where it's not as workable. And there. And what that does is it won't flash through on your paint. It dries really fast. I'll usually hit nail holes in my really visible areas. We're in a room. As you can see, I hit that corner there. There's nail holes there. Okay, uh, so like my painting setup, I really like uh, angled sash, uh, stiff brushes for trim. I'm painting with uh, Sherwood Williams Pro Classic. Um, I love these little painter pails. They have a magnet in them. Makes your life a lot easier. So I'll load up my brush. And the little trick is when you're painting, if you load up your brush, smack it on the side um, versus, you'll see some people drag all the paint off their brush because they're worried about it dripping off. Um, but you load it up, hit the side, kind of flip it up. You wanna make sure you have plenty of paint on there. So you can see just with one coat that Bondo disappears. I almost forgot the one rule of painting, always have a wet rag on you for wiping up paint. If you get it fast enough, it won't usually even get it to come off. So what I like to usually do is to get my corners. So I'll cut in along the top. So I haven't painted in a while, so I'm a little rusty here. But you can see where that Bondo was. You know, that cleans up very nice. And the big thing is 
Try not to put it on too heavy where it's gonna run on you. And I forgot to hit this corner. So I like to cut real small hole. And I really like this Alex uh, Flex. Um, it's for wood composite PVC. I just like, I don't like the quick dries. I feel like they don't hold up as well. And the key is to leave a, re you know, less is more. So small bead, keep the tip clean and kind of just let the weight of your gun into that corner at a slight angle. And then either, usually I just have a bucket, that painter's pail with a rag or a sponge in there, wet your finger, smooth it out. And here I'm working with texture, so it kind of gets up on the wall, but I'll come back and tape that off and paint it. But as you can see, that's just a very tiny amount. I'm gonna let that dry. While I go around and continue to paint, it's already ready. And I see I had a run where I last stopped. I'm gonna touch up. I will say the last trim job I did, I used the uh, Solo from Sherwin Williams. Their trim paint, it just came out and it was very heavy bodied and I actually sprayed it and brushed it in some of the job. But brushing, maybe I didn't thin it enough, uh, but I really didn't care for it. This is going on a lot easier. Uh, when I sprayed it, I had to thin it down with, I think it's called like M1. It's a latex extender, so it gives it more open time. I uh, used that, both tried it out when I was painting and uh, when I was spraying. I think all it is is um, propylene glycol, which is an antifreeze. I'm pretty sure that's what that what's in there, but this paint goes on a lot better than that solo. So we'll see what kind of a finish we get out of it. This job also gets some shoe mold and I got to paint that. So I'm thinking about spraying it with my HVLP gun. So I'll do a video on how well this paint atomizes in that sprayer which if you do a lot of trim or paint doors or or diy type of person i would recommend it's called the home right finish super max i think and it's only like 90 bucks and it actually does it does a really good job for the money the handyman on YouTube has done some reviews on it. That's how I found out about that uh, HBOP gun. It's all electric. You just plug it in. Typically, you don't even have to hardly thin your paint. I painted a bunch of doors with it. I also uh, use some water-based. I think it was Varathane. This is what I found to actually work the best but I sprayed some water-based poly with it and the finish turned out nice on a bunch of stained doors, oak six panel doors. So it paid for itself literally the first time I used it. So if you watch in this corner with one coat of white paint with that Bondo, the finish is gonna turn out like, you'd think that might kind of bleed through, but it doesn't flash at all. And if you're tackling any uh, painting job, I'd highly recommend buying a masker. It's easy to set up. You can either run uh, plastic, paper, different lengths, different tape. Um, makes tape and stuff off fast. So 
So there you go, a couple seconds, lay down your masking. So worth the investment there for sure.